Hi everyone, I hope everyone's doing well. And today I'm gonna to talk about some settings that I think are very confusing. Uh, and of course there's many more that I could talk about, but these are the ones that I think come up pretty early on when you start using the camera. So let's get started. Now I've done a full reset on the camera as usual, so we're all on the same page. And the first item I wanna talk about is the uh, auto white balance. So as you know, in the super control panel, it's right here. And if you uh, scroll down one notch, you can say keep warm colors on or keep warm colors off. And by default, the keep warm colors is on. Also in the menu, if you go to the second page of shooting menu one, here's our white balance setting and we can turn it on and off here when we're in auto white balance or we can go down here and this is specifically only for the auto white balance. We can turn it on or off here. And again, it's on by default. So there's three ways to keep warm colors on or off, right? We can do it through the super control panel. We can do it through the menu under the auto white balance, or we can do it with its own line item specifically for keep warm colors on and off. Uh, long as they keep the semantics the same, I can live with that. But the question is, what does keep warm colors on or off do? And basically, if the camera detects any warm colors, like in the two or 3,000 Kelvin range, uh, you know, like from tungsten lighting or halogen lighting, that lighting projects a very yellow light. What the camera's gonna do is try and maintain that particular white balance so things look warm. And it's very common for indoor pictures. So let me show you a couple pictures. My dining room has very warm LED lighting in it. And when I take a picture with keep warm colors on, it's gonna try and retain those warm colors to give you a more natural look to the image. Now, when I take another picture with keep warm colors off, the camera's gonna adjust the white balance to try to give you more accurate colors. Now, it's important to note that keep warm colors on only works when the camera detects there's warm lighting in the scene. So for example, here in my studio, I have no warm lighting. I just have all daylight white balanced LEDs. And I took two pictures again, one with keep warm colors on, and one with keep warm colors off, and you can see that there's no difference in the white balance. But if I add some warm lighting to the scene and I have keep warm colors on, it's gonna try and retain those warm colors. So this image here, actually all I did was add this uh, LED light and set it to 2500 Kelvin, which is a very warm light. And this is the image I got. Now this next image here on the right, I actually still have this warm lighting on, but I turned the keep warm colors off. And as you can see, the camera adjusted the white balance to try to give us a more accurate color. So I hope that made sense. And for me, I like to change that setting to keep warm colors off. And if I need to make changes to white balance later, I'm gonna shoot in raw, and that'll give me more flexibility to adjust white balance later in post-processing. Now, the next thing I wanna show you is down here in the wrench menu on page five, and these are the uh, power saving features. So we have like backlight LCD hold, so the camera's going to keep the LCD on for one minute, 30 seconds, or eight seconds, and then say after one minute, what it's gonna do is just dim the LCD. We also have a sleep mode where we can set to one, three, or five minutes. So basically the camera will go to sleep after one minute with this setting. And then auto power off is uh, makes sense. You know, we can do four hours, one hour. I like to use one hour. And all that means is after one hour, the camera will be completely off and I'll have to flip the switch back off and then back on to turn the camera back on. However, we have this quick sleep mode. And at first this seems to be, you know, pretty straightforward, right? Let's turn this on. And this backlight LCD, basically after eight seconds will turn off. I'm gonna change this to three. And then we have sleep mode. We can have it go to sleep and we can do this between one minute and three seconds. So let me change this to three seconds. All right, now let's go back to the control panel and you'll notice a little eco icon up here. That tells me I'm in quick sleep mode. And as you can see in three seconds, the camera went to sleep. However, let me, let me power back up. If I'm in regular live view mode, where I'm, you know, I can see what I'm looking at, right? Or the camera shows me what it sees. Um, if I wait three seconds, nothing's gonna happen. Right? And the problem is, 
or not the problem, but what's happening is the camera's going back to the default setting of one minute and not using the quick sleep mode. So quick sleep mode only works when you uh, click the uh, EVF button here and you're in the super control panel. So just be aware to use quick sleep mode. You have to turn quick sleep mode on. You have to be in the super control panel mode. And then you have to see that little green eco icon to confirm that quick sleep mode is active. I think Olympus or ARM system should have just got rid of the quick sleep mode altogether and just let us select in the sleep menu when we want the camera to go to sleep down to three seconds. Uh, and also not have it matter which mode we're in, right? Whether we're in control panel mode or live view mode, you know, the camera should just go to sleep when we want it to. Now, the next setting I get a lot of questions about is what's the difference between the noise filter and noise reduction? Well, the noise filter, which we can turn off or do low standard high, is basically uh, trying to reduce the noise in your JPEG images. This has no effect on your raw images. This only applies to your JPEGs. Uh, so typically, I like to just keep this on low. I also want to note that according to the manual, the noise filter only applies to high ISO images. Now, what that ISO threshold is, whether it's 400, 800, 1600, the manual doesn't tell you. But this is important because I'm going to talk about another noise filter setting uh, after I talk about noise reduction. Now let's talk about noise reduction, and this is specifically for long exposures. So if you have an uh, exposure of 4 seconds or 10 seconds or 30 seconds, what the camera is going to do is, after you take your first 10 second exposure, for example, it's going to close the shutter and take another 10 second exposure with the shutter closed. And then it's going to look at that image, which should be totally black, but if it sees any noise, in the black areas, it's going to subtract that from the first exposure that you took, thereby giving you a much cleaner image. And this works really, really well. And it does have a direct impact on both RAW and JPEG images. So when we're in auto mode, what the camera is going to do is detect the temperature in the camera and determine if it needs to use this or not and at what timing. So Let's do a quick exposure now with auto. And we'll set a long exposure, say, let's just do one second, for example. And nothing happened. We just got a one second exposure. Let's go to four seconds. Okay, now the shutter's closed and it's taking another four second exposure. And what it's done is detected the noise in that second exposure and subtracted it from the first one. And again, like I said, it does generate much cleaner images. When I turn uh, noise reduction on, it's going to work every time. So let me go back to one second. And you can see it took two images. It took the initial one second, then another one second image. Now for me, I just leave this on auto. And honestly, I didn't see much difference in long exposures until you got up to one or two minutes or five minutes. Then I did see a difference between having this on or off. But um, unless you're really pressed for time and need a shot right away, uh, it doesn't hurt to wait for the second exposure to finish. Now, this is something new on the OM-1 and that's low ISO processing. And our choices are drive priority or detail priority. And um, it's pretty self-explanatory, but just know that this only works when you're using sequential shooting, like 10 frames per second or 25 frames per second, whether it's mechanical or silent shutter, so that you get faster frames per second when you use drive priority. But when you use detail priority, it can slow the frames per second down from, say, 25 frames per second down to 20 frames per second. I mean, that number is going to vary, but uh, that's the idea behind this. And again, in practice, just leave this on drive priority. I cannot tell any difference between using drive priority versus detail priority other than my frames per second slows down. 
So those are the most confusing settings that I think you hit pretty early on when you start using the camera. So I hope you like this video. If so, consider subscribing, hit the like button, and if you can, maybe buy me a coffee or two. It helps making these videos a lot easier for me. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again soon.